on this edition of The Pipeline. We'll take a look how the Service Authority is focusing on greener business practices. We'll explain how a new technology is making it easier to detect leaks in the water distribution system. We'll take a trip to a mountain lake that can help boost our water supply in times of severe drought. And we'll stop by a Manassas school to learn about the importance of community service and clean water. Hi, and welcome to The Pipeline, the video newsletter of the Prince William County Service Authority. I'm Melissa Hopkins. And I'm Keenan Howell. Today we're at the Lake Ridge Nursery and Garden Center in Woodbridge, which opened in Prince William County more than 20 years ago. Later on in the show, we'll talk to nursery co-owner Susan Gray, who will tell us why the end of the warm weather doesn't mean you have to ignore a green thumb. Well, speaking of green, the Service Authority is taking a closer look at going green and how the Authority can continue its responsible stewardship of the environment by examining the efficiency of its own facilities. And it starts with checking out what some other organizations are doing to take the lead in this fast-growing movement. The U.S. Green Building Council created the LEAD program as a nationally accepted benchmark for green buildings. It was created so that claims of green building could be validated by a third party, so we manage the system and provide that validation for buildings that are claiming to do environmentally responsible design and construction. Several business facilities in Prince William County have already been certified by the LEAD program, including PNC Bank in Bristow. PNC was the first bank in the U.S. to design green branches. According to the bank, branches built or renovated to meet LEAD standards have reduced energy and water consumption by nearly 50%. Even if you look in the offices, there's, there's something on the ceiling what actually is a sensor to sense the number of people in the office so it can adjust the amount of heat or cooling that comes into the office. In Gainesville, Wetland Studies and Solutions has applied similar energy and water-saving measures in their LEED-certified headquarters. The building's green roof greatly reduces water runoff into storm drains, which is a major source of pollution to the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. For the smaller storms in the half inch to inch range, no water leaves the roof. It just simply lands on the plants and absorbed on the soil particles and the succulent plants take up the water. Um, for the larger storms, it's going to let the water pass through, but it slows it down so the time of concentration is much slower. The service authority has begun taking steps to make its own facilities more green, with initial efforts focused at the H.L. Mooney Water Reclamation Facility. We're installing an energy management system in the computer control system to help us control total power use and limit power during demand intervals. They'll help control the billing cost and provide overall greater efficiency. Leaks in the county water system have been a constant and costly challenge for the service authority. In fact, utility services have been struggling with the detection and management of leaks in their systems for more than 30 years. The pipeline's Jenna Coker tells us about a new leak detection technology that is making quick work of what used to be a lengthy process. For more than 20 years, service authority maintenance workers used time-consuming analog equipment to detect leaks in its water distribution system. This slow process often resulted in increased amounts of water loss and required more manpower. To increase conservation and lower costs, the service authority purchased new fully digital leak detection devices. We are saving a lot of employee time and this system allows us to be much more effective at finding and stopping expensive leaks. Maintenance workers use the new digital AccuCore 3000 detection system by placing sensors on hydrants and on suspected leak positions. This is showing that there is no leak. Leaks in underground pipes produce a sound which the high-tech detectors correlate to pinpoint their exact location, factoring the pipe's length, diameter, and composition. The AccuCore system can even detect leaks of up to 3,000 feet away. With this faster, more accurate detection technology, the Service Authority is reducing water loss, doing less investigatory digging, and repairing leaks in the system more quickly, all of which spell good news for customers. For The Pipeline, I'm Jenna Coker. At times, a customer may notice an unusual spike in their water bills. And the Service Authority can now accurately explain those unusually high water usage levels on a month-by-month -month basis. For new customers, the Service Authority has begun installing meter registers that communicate water usage with remote technology. Before, the Authority only used touchpad registers, which required a meter reader to touch a wand to an electronic pad on the meter lids. 
The registered record readings every 15 minutes and compare the data to typical daily usage. This customer-focused approach allows the service authority to automatically detect abnormal or excessive water use. We hope to eventually print this information on the customer's monthly bills, letting them know they may have a leak. Although the new registers will cost customers to request them an additional $25, they practically eliminate meter misreads. We saw the system in place in Opelika, Alabama, and both the city and customers really like it. For the Pipeline, I'm Paula Dozier. Northern Virginia experienced moderate drought conditions this summer. Fortunately, Potomac River levels remained high enough to prevent the need for voluntary restrictions on water usage. If those levels had dropped significantly, however, there's a lake in West Virginia that might have been relied upon to help quench our thirst for an abundant water supply. 150 miles northwest of Prince William County, Jennings Randolph Lake is a nearly 1,000 acre mountain oasis. It was designed by the Army Corps of Engineers to reduce flood damage and provide a reserve water supply for communities like the metropolitan Washington area downriver. Most of the time, however, the lake is a haven for boating, fishing, and swimming during the warmer months. Perched atop this man-made marble sits a natural marble called the Waffle Rock. It was formed when folds of sand and rock were thrown together more than 250 million years ago. It got its name from a member of the Army Corps of Engineers who visited and said the surface pattern looked a lot like a breakfast waffle. The lake straddles the Maryland and West Virginia state lines. The most recent time that the Interstate Commission on the Potomac River Basin asked for water to be released from the reservoir was August 2002. Joining us now is Susan Gray of the Lake Ridge Nursery and Garden Center. Susan, now that the cooler months are coming, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to put our green thumb in hibernation. That's correct. So what are some of the tips or some of the things you can do in the, in the fall months? Well, it's a great time to plant your bulbs for the spring, daffodils, hyacinth, tulips. Also a great time to plant your perennials. Great time to plant bushes, trees, shrubs. Also some of the perennials that are requiring a little less maintenance. Tell us about that. Um, there's a wide variety of gardening in, in Virginia, so can you point out a couple of plants that maybe need less maintenance, less water? Sure. I put behind us some of the perennials. Here's a fall sedum that's getting ready to bloom. You can plant it in the ground and basically forget about it, and it'll bloom in the fall. We also have some succulents that are very easy to plant in the ground, and you basically forget about them, and then they'll bloom once or twice a year. And tell us about, is there a product uh, or products out there um, that can reduce the amount of watering time, for example? There is. We have a new product line that we're carrying. It's uh, Angel Moss. It's from a company in New Zealand. Um, it's really great. It requires half of the regular watering. What I'm showing you now is a um, Angel Moss pack, which you would put in a planter or in a hanging basket. You sprinkle it in with your dirt or put it on top, and it requires half the regular watering. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you, Keenan. Though kids were out of school for the summer, some had an opportunity to learn about the significance of clean drinking water while camping on the grounds of the Pennington School in Manassas. This lawn in Manassas was a real hot spot at the Pennington School's camping across the curriculum program that was held this summer. It was also a perfect time of year for the service authority to talk about the value of water. The camping consisted of outdoor activities among several tents set up in the front school field. Each tent was staffed by a different group in the community, including the service authority. We hope to reach them at a young age to instill in them the idea of the, the importance of it, the value of it, and the need to, uh, to, to care for that resource. Gordon also spoke to young people about the availability of clean water in the United States compared to a rural village in Guatemala, where there may be little to no water infrastructure. Gordon says the campers gained a new appreciation for the clean, safe water that utilities like the Service Authority provide them and their families when they turn on their taps. The Service Authority also teamed up with the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments to promote wise water use at a late summer Potomac Nationals game. PNATS fans from all over the metropolitan area stopped by the educational booth for water conservation tips. Does that sound good? Cool. So cool. The water, use it wisely, rubber duckies were a huge hit. Would you like a duck? I do. You want red? With, yeah, pink, orange, and blue. And the home team's mascot, Uncle Slam, stopped by to help the service authority promote conservation and environmental stewardship. That's a wrap on this episode of the Service Authority Pipeline. I'm Melissa Hopkins. And I'm Keenan Howell. 
reminding you to visit us on the web at www.pwcsa.org to learn about the many ways we serve you every day.